Welcome to Breaking Wire, please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for more updates. It was sold as a vision of the future, a symbol of American ingenuity reborn. In the heart of the nation, a massive new factory would rise, a gigafab designed to produce the world's most advanced computer chips. Politicians hailed it as a national triumph, tech executives promised innovation free from foreign supply chains. Backed by $50 billion, it was America's declaration of technological independence. The project was announced with fanfare, featuring smiling governors and CEOs against digital renderings of a futuristic campus. High-paying jobs, a revitalized economy, and a secure supply of semiconductors were promised. The message? America was back in the game, no longer at the mercy of geopolitical tensions. For the small town chosen as its home, the factory was a lottery ticket, promising transformation. Local diners buzzed, with talk of new opportunities, real estate prices climbed. The project was more than a factory, it was a symbol of hope, a reversal of industrial decline. The government, through the CHIPS Act, poured billions into the venture, framing it as a critical investment in national security. But behind the polished presentations, a different story was unfolding. The grand vision was already showing signs of stress, the project's immense scale and complexity were breeding grounds for problems. Promises made in boardrooms were on a collision course with harsh realities. The Silicon Dream was about to become a very public, very expensive nightmare. The seeds of the $50 billion disaster had been sown long before the first shovel hit the ground. The dream was intoxicating, but the reality was sobering. The hype was deafening, but the execution was faltering. The story everyone wanted to believe was unraveling. The factory aimed to reduce America's dependence on foreign-made semiconductors. For decades, the U.S. designed advanced chips, but manufacturing moved overseas, creating vulnerability. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted this threat, crippling industries reliant on chips. The GigaFab was the answer, designed to be the crown jewel of America's tech industry. It promised to produce cutting-edge chips, requiring complex and expensive facilities. The plan was to build a fab that could compete globally, creating tens of thousands of jobs. High-skilled engineering positions and construction jobs were expected to boost the economy. The ripple effect was projected to inject billions into the regional economy. The plan was a strategic move in the global tech race, securing leadership in critical fields. Advanced semiconductors are key to future technologies like AI and quantum computing. The factory wasn't just about today's chips, it was about future technologies. The stakes were high, making subsequent failures devastating. The project was a model for bringing manufacturing back to the American heartland. It aimed to create a new technology hub, far from Silicon Valley. The vision was grand, but the execution was flawed. The first problem was the budget, with costs quickly surpassing initial estimates. The project became a financial black hole, with costs ballooning beyond $50 billion. Delays plagued the project, with a shortage of skilled labor exacerbating the issue. America lacked workers with experience in building semiconductor fabs. A frantic effort to recruit workers from other states and countries drove up costs. Planning mistakes worsened the situation, with communication breakdowns common. Metric and imperial measurement mix-ups led to costly errors. Ventilation systems required last-minute redesigns, adding to expenses. As costs mounted, leaders tried to maintain a facade of confidence. Press releases blamed global challenges but morale plummeted. Safety concerns and quality control issues arose from pressure to cut corners. The dream of a state-of-the-art facility was compromised by chaotic construction. The cracks in the foundation were becoming a literal and financial reality. The project's leaders faced a harsh reality as the enterprise teetered on collapse. For workers, the project was a mix of opportunity and chaos. High wages drew people from across the country, but they found disorganization and safety issues. Conflicting orders and unsafe conditions led to frequent accidents and departures. Local businesses initially thrived, but the boom turned to bust as the project faltered. Contractors faced idle machinery and debts while new businesses went bankrupt. The promised prosperity became a trap, leaving financial ruin in its wake. Tech companies relying on the factory's output scrambled for alternatives. Delays disrupted their business, undermining the Gigafab's purpose. The story of Sarah, a young engineer, captures the human toll. She moved her family for a dream job, only to be laid off as the project unraveled. Her family's investment in the community was lost, a personal tragedy amid the disaster. The company's promises proved illusory, leaving many like Sarah in limbo. 
The project's failure created a ripple effect of uncertainty throughout the tech industry. The human stories behind the failure highlight the broader impact. The project's collapse left a trail of broken dreams and shattered lives. The community's hopes were dashed, and the future remained uncertain. The Gigafab's failure was a cautionary tale of ambition and mismanagement. A similar factory in South Korea succeeded where the American project failed. The key difference was experience. The Korean company had built dozens of fabs. They had a well-established playbook and deep institutional knowledge. Their approach to labor was different, with a core team of skilled specialists. This ensured consistency and quality control, unlike the American project's chaos. Taiwan's TSMC offers another comparison, with a focus on operational efficiency. Their success is built on tightly integrated supply chain and cluster effect. The American project lacked a semiconductor ecosystem, complicating logistics. A European project faced similar issues, showing money alone isn't enough. Without strategy and expertise, even well-funded projects can fail. The American disaster was a painful example of common pitfalls. The global comparisons highlight the importance of experience and planning. The American project lacked the unified management and expertise needed. The failure was not unique, but it was a particularly stark example. The lessons from global successes and failures are clear and instructive. As the project crumbled, blame was widespread. Executives faced criticism for mismanagement and misleading timelines. Internal warnings were ignored, blinded by ambition and subsidies. Government officials were scrutinized for inadequate due diligence. Billions were awarded based on promises, not capability. Politicians distanced themselves, raising questions about industrial policy. Contractors shared blame, with over-promising and chaotic oversight. The lack of accountability led to a system of blame-shifting. The disaster was a systemic failure, not the fault of one entity. It was a result of hype over substance and poor government policy. The erosion of industrial know-how left the country unprepared. The blame game, distracted from understanding the failure's causes. The project highlighted the need for better planning and execution. The fallout was a lesson in the importance of accountability. The failure underscored the need for strategic industrial policy. The disaster teaches the importance of humility and realism. Future projects need honest assessments of costs and timelines. Independent experts should vet plans before public money is spent. America must shift from move fast to plan carefully for national security. Investing in skilled labor is crucial to avoid future failures. Vocational schools and apprenticeship programs are needed. A unified command structure is essential for project success. A single, accountable contractor should manage complex projects. Learning from international successes can guide future efforts. The government should act as a strategic partner, not just a funder. Regional clusters can foster industrial ecosystems and growth. The Gigafab's failure is a painful lesson but offers a path forward. A smarter, strategic approach can rebuild America's industrial base. The lessons learned can guide future projects to success. The future requires careful planning and investment in people.